Hi, welcome to this video series on low-level programming. In this segment, I'm going to talk about the difference between unsigned and signed. In particular, when you make a function call, uh, how does the assembly code look like? Okay, if I make an i plus one, where i is an integer, uh, is it different when I do uh, i plus one when i is an unsigned integer? Okay, that's not necessarily so clear. So I would like to spend some time walking with you on these kinds of low-level details. As you can see here, we have a tiny program, which is very good in the sense that we can easily understand, yet easy to analyze using assembly code, uh, but uh, the, the observations will be very remarkable, um, at least to, to folks who are new to this notion of assembly code analysis. What we are seeing here is a very, very simple code, right? You have a function f, which takes an integer i, we increment it by one. Here, um, it's an unsigned um, integer and we do the same. And here we are calling the uh, function um, and we call it demo. Uh, but here you can see here integer is the type, uh, but we're calling an unsigned, uh, um, we're calling a function that expects an unsigned. So uh, from an assembly standpoint, is there any difference? I would like to spend time with you on this. Okay, um, let us take this code. Um, I, I renamed it a little bit. F seems to be an abstract name. So I call it ink. Ink means increment, right? Um, there is no difference essentially other than just changing the name from F to ink, okay? First, let's, let's ask ourselves, um, is there any difference between incrementing um, i by one when i is an integer type as opposed to i is an unsigned type, okay? Let's look at that assembly, assembly code and look at the structure. Let's compile it first, okay? okay now let's load it into GDB and look at disassembly of uh, say ink i. No, no table. Let's look at the, hmm, there's something wrong here. Give me a minute. Oh, I call it in types. Okay, that's not a problem, right? Let's, okay, here's better. I'm going to use the at and syntax. That's the one that I have been using. We can now see the, the structure of ink i in terms of assembly. Okay, where is add? Add is over here, right? Adds one, add one to the input. Input is argument that we passed, which is stored uh, at this particular address, right? Uh, it's a, you see here, move um, a plus ebb to eax, um, and then we add one to it. That's basically what this portion of the code is, okay. Well, let's try the next code, right? Let's see, uh, the next function. Disassemble ink, unsigned integer. This may be surprising for some of the folks because there's no difference in assembly. As you can see here, there's literally no difference between uh, these two functions. Because at the assembly level, there's no notion of unsigned or, or int or regular signed. Everything is just a bunch of bits. We interpret it um, later, when we do print, uh, for example, print an I, uh, integer as a signed or unsigned, we interpret it later. But at the fundamental level, add, add itself is not aware whether it's adding two uh, int types or uh, two unsigned int types. It doesn't know anything about that. It just uh, um, adds the types, adds the data that, that we have given as part of the registers, for example. Okay. Like this, right? Add, add. There's no difference other than that, right? It's exactly the same. Let's look at the third part, right? Disassemble the demo part. We would expect something to happen, right? Because our i here is an, un is an integer type, uh, but the program that we are calling, right? Our function we are calling uh, requires an unsigned integer type. So we may expect some conversion happening, but, but we can see the assembly code. There's nothing like this. There's no conversion whatsoever. Uh, we take the argument i from the stack, right? And put it uh, to the register. That's the reason, um, well, we take it from the uh, register, right? Move memory to register and then pu put it to the stack. So uh, I is on the stack now. And then we call the function, um, the, the function which is basically the, uh, defined at um, uh, inc UI uh, address, which is uh, one E in this case. And uh, we do uh, add plus 40 ESP to reset the stack point or whatnot. That, that's not important at this point, but the main message is there's no conversion whatsoever happening from uh, int to unsigned int, okay? So the main message is that um, addition 
itself is agnostic to notion of unsigned or uh, regular int. When you call a function uh, where um, the, the function that you're calling uh, is expecting an unsigned, but you're sending a, a regular signed type, there's no conversion whatsoever. But nothing, you can see here, nothing is happening, okay? We can do one more demo quickly. Let's say whether we can, we call it demo two, right? We take an unsigned um, I, right? And we, we call the first one, which requires regular integer I, okay? Let's see what, uh, whether we can see any difference in this case. I'm going to compile this again and open it. And uh, open it again here, okay? And uh, see, disassemble uh, demo and disassemble demo two. Even in demo two, there is no difference. You see here, uh, our data i is part of the stack, right? We 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 push it here, and we just call the function. That's all. There's no conversion whatsoever. Okay. So this confirms our um, assertion that at the assembly level, uh, the types are not uh, explicitly handled. Okay. Meaning you can add um, uh, add x and y. Even if your X and Y are declared as unsigned, it's the same assembly code if they are declared as regular type int, okay? So that's the main message of this segment of the demo. Thank you very much.